There once was a clever and passionate girl who wandered away from a fair. She ventured inside a wagon-like ride, and what did she find in there? The squeaker wonkers. Welcome, my dear, said a voice from the wind, to the fabulous Squicker show. You dropped in your coin, so now you can join. Come up here and see how it goes. The girl looked around to see who it was that spoke with a sinister tone. But she saw not a soul, save a rat in a hole. It seemed that the girl was alone. At once there came a noise from above. Nine figures swung down from the shadows. Their bodies hung loose, as if strung from a noose, as if all nine were hanging from gallows. Come on to the stage, don't be afraid. Meet my motley crew. They may have their vices, but those are my spices, and I suspect so do you. <laughs> the head of the squicker wonka troop is known as Papa the Frog. All right, that was a little bit of squinker walkers. By Evangeline Lilly, and that was actually her reading it, which I was really impressed that she could do that with her voice. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please give a warm welcome. You know her as Freckles, a.k.a. Kate from Lost, uh, Tariel from The Hobbit, and she just finished filming Ant-Man, I believe. Uh, she's the queen of Comic-Con. Give it up for Evangeline Lilly. <laughs> you have awesome hair. Awesome hair. I expected everyone at Google to have awesome hair like that. So many of you are so much more boring than I thought you would be. Come on, give them a chance. Wow, way give to insult chance. the audience right out oh, of the right. gate. Oh, wait, start again. You guys are amazing. I'm so happy to be here at Google. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Yeah, Google. Go. G. O. O. G. L. E. G. No. Dot com. Uh, I was right. I was trying to. I was trying to get a feel for it. <laughs> I was. I was there. I was with you. <clears throat> this is on, right? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Good. Who did the uh, Who did the voiceover for that? Um, that was the incredible Sylvester McCoy. Some of you might know him from Doctor Who. Uh, he was Radagast in The Hobbit. Wow. Um, he did an amazing job. You really brought out the big guns. I mean, Peter Jackson did the forward to this movie, and Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens, who basically write the. The movies? I, I was lucky enough to be hanging out with big guns when I made the movie. <laughs> so, you know, on their downtime, they'd invite me over for dinner, and I'd be like, you want to just look at this? Well, I just brought something over. It just happened to be in my purse. <laughs> and then they were wonderful enough to give me their feedback and input. And actually, Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens worked tirelessly with me. Um, they had no extra time, but they spent hours um, helping me edit the book and, you know, make it everything it should be. Because I, I initially wrote the story when I was 14. And um, it wasn't the poem that exists in this book. I had to go through a ton of rewrites to make it publishable and, and make it something that would essentially introduce um, a series of 18 books. Oh, oh wow. wow. So, yeah, that leads us to, uh, well, I guess we've gotten a good picture from the, the VO and the audio, what the kind of the piece is about. But the general tone is much scarier uh, that way. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, was. I was like, ooh. I just recently was at the Brooklyn Library, and I started by asking the kids in the audience, how many of you have read the book? And almost everyone had, because we had prepped the kids. And then they said... <laughs> <laughs> did your and teacher make you read it? <laughs> <laughs> and did she tell you to say you love it? Um, but what, I asked them, were, were the they, they were the second graders. Impossible to control, by the way. Second graders are crazy. But they, um, I asked them, was it scary? Did you guys think the book was scary? And they were all like, no, it's not scary. We're so tough. And then I did it this way with the audio, and I actually read it instead of Sylvester. <laughs> and like, I could tell that within like the second or third page, they were all like, oh, I'm kind of scared now. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, this, the power this lady's audio. nuts. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was me or the music. <laughs> Mommy, why is the pretty lady freaking us out? <laughs> oh, speaking of pretty lady, it was the cutest thing in the world. There was this little boy in the front row. I mean, it was like if you were the little boy in the front row, and he sat there through the whole thing. It was so distracting, and he just... He just kept doing this. You are so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing bright red lipstick that day, and you know, little kids are suckers for bright red lipstick. Oh, are they? I, okay. <laughs> I think there's a couple guys up here who are fighting the urge to say that right now. Uh, you were talking about big guns. You've, uh, you're talking. About, speaking of guns, like, what do you do? Why How did do you, you bring out the big guns? Today? Is it just all that bow and arrow uh, work? Um, uh, <laughs> I know. I mean, everyone is always like, w so what, you know, do you get a trainer and all that stuff for roles? And I don't do any of that stuff. I'm the laziest fit person in the world. Um, do you do like the Rocky what, Okay, thing? what is the secret to that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I got the lazy, lazy part yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> the, the secret to that is that um, for a good 10 years of my life, I was obsessed with fitness. Okay. So there's a lot of muscle memory in here. You know, okay. so like now, like since I had a kid, <laughs> you know, there's just not so much time for it or nearly as much passion for it. Yeah. But there was a period in my life where I would be the person in the gym for like two or three hours at a time. And uh, in one day. It <laughs> 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 yeah, sometimes twice a day. I do that over a I month. I loved it. I loved uh, it for a while. But this is really, this is your passion. This is your, yes. uh, is this kind of an area that you, you want to go in more so than acting even? Well, for those of you, who, for anybody who's um, in any way, shape, or form a fan of mine, they probably know that I'm kind of vocal about the fact that I'm not, gr I don't love acting. And it's, what? <laughs> I know, it's like every struggling actress out there just wants to lynch me. They hate, you know, they probably hate my guts. But uh, it just sort of happened, and I, I got lucky, and this thing happened, and, and I was sort of taken aback by it, and I didn't love it. It wasn't for me, really. And so I've continued to do it because it's a pretty decent day job. You know, it pays okay. Not, not too bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in the meantime, I've been working very hard on pursuing my actual dream and my actual passion, which is to be a writer. Um, in fact, in the last, let's see, five years, in the last five years, I have spent a year and three months acting, and I have spent the rest of the time full-time as a writer. So... Well, for somebody, but you know, it's kind of interesting for somebody who's not eh, crazy about acting. You're in some pretty cool stuff. I know, isn't it? <laughs> you cool? know, I mean, that's kind of like, but it's kind of nice that you don't have to feel the pressure to like take every like girlfriend part or you know, you get to do some really really cool stuff. I mean, like Ant Man. I mean, do you just have nerds camping out in your front yard? <laughs> is like <laughs> just. just I know I, I am I am uh, I've, what's wonderful is I've sort of come to the promised land of of geekdom because I was um, you're at the very core of it now I, <laughs> I, found, I found my people these I, people are working on their phones while they're listening well, <laughs> that's how geeky we are they're twenty percenting right now oh look at that oh, throwing wow. around the lingo. Yeah, no, I was I was not that I was not like the cool girl in school. I I wrote the I was that your opinion? I, yeah, no, I'm no. <laughs> you grew up in uh, in Canada. I did, somewhere. I did, and I will I will self I will admittedly say that because the cool girls didn't want a pretty girl wandering around that was outside of their core, because ah. that's a threat. I was technically allowed to be called a part of the group never, like, never fit. And I was always a loner, and I was always on my own because, um, you know, the, those girls would want to get together and, like, read Sixteen magazine and go through wedding magazines and talk about, you know, uh, crap about other girls and crap about boys, and I just couldn't go there. I couldn't get to it. I was busy writing the squicker bunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, this, the, this, the, so this wasn't just something you pulled out of a drawer. This is like, th that was like the p uh, part of it was, was, was made, but it wasn't in, like, limerick style. Before? It wasn't in limerick style, but it was poetry. In okay. fact, um, on evangelinelily.com, the original poem is posted um, because I still, it's so weird. I was actually preparing for, I'm doing a book tour right now for the book. And as I was, we speak, right As we now. speak, literally, yeah. this is it. This is it, yeah. Um, and I, I kept sort of preparing for these readings I was going to do with these kids. And it was so strange because every time I would prepare, what would come out of my mouth and out of my mind was the original poem. Like it's so ingrained in my mind. It's so much the original that I. It's the one that I keep coming back to. Um, so I posted it on my website because I thought it'd be fun for people to see the evolution of the story. And did, did it really come out? I mean, do you feel confident? Like, does it does it really look like you always imagined it, um, or better? Uh, or? It, be better, weirder, 
creepier. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, tell us starting there. How about uh, so your partnership with Johnny Fraser Allen, who illustrated the book? He's like a Weta workshop guy, right? And that's uh, you know who does all the uh, di effects, physical. These and digital? people are all geeks. They know who Weta workshop yeah, right. is. Yeah, well, right. You know. <laughs> do you? Do you? <laughs> you gotta fill an hour. She's here, like, lady. I'm not that geeky. Lord of the okay? Rings. They do all the Lord <laughs> of the Rings stuff. Yeah. <laughs> if you need a, cro a period accurate crossbow, you know. Call call up the Weta workshop, but he so he was working there, and you guys were obviously spending time together because of the Hob the Hobbit or no, it didn't Hobbit. quite work that way. I was at Weta workshop, and I was just so so Weta workshop works similarly to Google in the sort of twenty percent notion. They really encourage their artists to pursue their own passions and their own projects, and they sort of facilitate that. And I was walking around this incredibly creative, inspiring building, it's sort of like being on the Google campus where people come here probably I'm sure you're used to this and they're like oh my god I would want to work somewhere like this is amazing and that was me I was that obnoxious person at what I just being like this is incredible it's this creativity factory and and I'm a creative person and I've always wanted to create my own things and that was one of the tough things about being an actor was like I'm I'm too you know like I'm I'm not good at being the one that someone says do this and then I go do it I'm better at saying do this <laughs> yeah. um, so I just wanted to create something of my own and I'd been dreaming about and claiming that I was going to become a writer for about at that point three years since around the last season of Lost saying look this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go be a writer but man like just going and being a writer is a lot harder than it might seem so I showed the head of what a workshop Richard Taylor. Um, some of my children's storybooks and said, is there any illustrators in this building who might be interested in partnering with me? And Johnny fell in love with the Squicker Wonkers and created this concept painting with these marionette puppe puppets. And I was, like, they were not originally marionette puppets. Originally, I, all I knew was they were human, but not human, and I knew they were a bit creepy and weird. But I didn't, he brought the wagon, he brought the puppets, he brought the teddy, he brought all this stuff to the table that enhanced and, and just, it sort of felt like what I didn't know I was holding in my brain came out of his hand. It was incredible. So should we tell people a little bit about what the story is? It's basically a, a, a kind of bratty girl who, who comes across these marionette characters and they sort of teach her a lesson, spoiler alert, um, and <laughs> turn her into one of them. Whoa, spoiler that's alert. Spoiler oh my God, alert. that's it. That's Sorry. the end. Well, no, no. no need to buy the book now, guys. <laughs> Um, you can it buy is. Them it over is. There at the but end, you know, it's like so. It's clearly a cautionary tale. But I'm always emphasizing that it's intentionally a modern day cautionary tale, and that the old cautionary tales just programmed into kids' minds this polarized worldview that there's an us and a them. There's bad guys and good guys, and you want to be with the good guys so that you can go kill all the bad guys or punish the bad guys or not associate with them and exclude the bad guys. Let them hang out with your group, but not in the inner <laughs> circle. <laughs> right. right. I got you. Yeah. I see where you this came from. Yep, yep. You got my number. I'm just getting it's back at the popular together. girls with this book. Um, Sherry. It was like, it's essentially what I wanted was to reprogram kids to realize, no, nobody's perfect. Nobody's all good. Nobody's all bad. We've all got a bit of, you know, vice within us, and we've all got some great qualities about us. And it's all about, first of all, accepting and loving yourself as you are, which, you know, the protagonist of this series is the, the Squicker Wonkers, who are extremely flawed, sort of creepy, weird-looking puppets so you know having heroes who don't look typically like heroes but then also remembering and teaching children that there are consequences to your actions and so you know understanding yourself and knowing yourself on both sides the dark and the light is is how you sort of can live a, a happier life and, and not befall the sort of end that befalls Selma um, so you know I just think I look around me and I see a lot of entitled um, disillusioned teenagers. Oh yeah, you you guys. No, <laughs> teenagers. Okay, yeah, I got you. Okay. And I Not think that part of that is because they were taught in their storybooks that if you're a good person, life turns out perfectly and everything's great in your world. And that's not real. And they were also not told that good people can have flaws. You know, there's just a lot of things missing in the programming. And I think that that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, if if something bad happens to them, it's like, oh, me, <laughs> I'm a good person. That can't happen to me. That's yeah. not right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you, just, you just go around telling kids, like, shit happens. <laughs> shit happens, dude. Life's tough. Speaking of, the, quite speaking of the, the sooner you wake up to it, the better. <laughs> yeah. The, the one part that really kind of creeps me out about uh, this is they all have uh, coins for eyes. There's something really odd about that. Is that, uh, what does that have to do with? Is that like. Uh, That's a great story. Um, so. Remember how I told you I brought this to Fran and Philippa, and mm -hmm. I and they helped me with the editing. Um, when I brought them the illustrated version, 
Philippa almost Peter pants, but not from excitement, from stress, because she said, you can't do this, you can't make this book. Um, everyone's going to think it's Coraline, because all these puppets had buttons for eyes. And I didn't, I'd never seen Coraline. I was a bit out of the loop. And so um, she, she made me go sit down and watch the film. And so after the book had been already finished illustrated, I mean, it was done and dusted, I watched Coraline and had a conniption because obviously I realized I can't repeat what's already been done. So we had to find something else to put on the eyes that wasn't buttons. And of course, you know, creative projects usually have a mind of their own and they find the way to the best solution. And what happened was um, I threw out this idea of maybe we could put coins on their eyes and then Johnny Fraser Allen lit up and said you realize that in Irish culture you put coins on a person's eyes at their wake it's like a symbol of death and I was like oh, that's so good so yeah yeah <laughs> better than buttons yeah. buttons are for losers go <laughs> line um <laughs> <laughs> so what were your, uh, like, growing well, There were people in the audience who didn't like that. There was like, a, oh, don't go there. I don't care. I'm, I, I will get fired Coraline. any day now. It doesn't matter. Uh, um, but, uh, no, um, so, yeah, growing up and maybe, you know, after your formative years, were there sort of darker influences, like books and movies that you were into? Like, we were talking about some of the ones that we liked, like, uh, you know, like the original Hobbit, the animated series, was a little, especially the Gollum thing was so creepy. And we thought that yeah, this looks a lot. This has kind of a similar style to that 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 cartoon. Some of the some of the animation in the Who drawing. Who wasn't a huge fan of Labyrinth? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dark Definitely. Crystal. Does anyone in here? God, it's magic. <laughs> yeah, come on with his bulging what? That's, that scared me as I, a child. That was the scariest part of the movie. You know what's? Who was Michael Jackson? I'm so glad it was Bowie. I have real. I Bowie. found out recently that a lot of women of a certain age, first uh, male crush was David Bowie in Labyrinth. In Labyrinth, and yes. I find that's so weird. He's like so androgynous and kind of like. I know. He's got like Tina Turner hair. But, but he's a. But, he, but my he's wife a, a is full like, oh grown my God. man hitting on a child. Yeah, and all us little eleven-year-olds were like, "Whoa, I feel something in my pants." <laughs> I don't it understand must, I what's it's, happening. It's the Bowie voice, probably. Yeah, that <laughs> helps. That helps, and he could do that thing with the ball. You want to go to Chuck E. Cheese with me? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> I would and what about what about Edward Gorey? Does anyone here know Edward oh, Gorey? Yeah. Oh, he was the best. He was the best. So you were definitely into like the creepy Are you specifically kid into stories, those kind of stuff. As a <laughs> not kid, specifically, it's just like sort of across the board. I mean, I like a good Giving Tree. Everybody oh, does. Yeah, sure. Oh sure. I mean, there's nothing creepy about the Giving Tree. I like it all. Um, I had somebody ask me, "Can we do an interview with you where you basically tell everybody why fluffy books suck?" And I was like, "No. I mean, I think kids need." All of it. They need the spectrum. And I just see that there's a lot of sort of kitten and bubblegum books out there. And so, you know, we need the balance. We need it all. And this is the the first of many in this yes. series, yes? Yes. 18 is to be specific. Have right you on. written them all or are there? No, I I know what they'll all, like, I know the story for um, the first nine. And then I know the plot, like, the gist for the, the final nine. And the reason for 18, as um, somebody who worked on Los Angeles, is really important is because I have an overarching plan for the series. I'm not just shooting from the hip. I <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn. You heard it here Burn. first. They had a plan. I'm not knocking them, but I know y'all think they didn't have a plan. Now, did you? Were, were They're you, gonna come <laughs> out of the wagon, and it's 1907. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't uh, ask you too many lost questions. But were, did you ever, in the middle of a scene, go, "What's going on?" In that show. <laughs> All the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. But by the way, after season three, they lost me completely. I was like, I had a you were like in the corner up. writing squicker walkers, and they were like, yeah. can we get her on set? <laughs> no, like I literally would come to set with alcohol because I was like, that's the only way I'm gonna make sense of this scene. I gotta get a little lips, a little loopy. Wow, we're getting all kinds of dirt. We, yeah. No, I mean, we we both it's love an adult that audience, show. right? I mean, we both love that show. We stuck with it to the very end. So you thank know. you, yeah. thank uh, you for sticking with us. My wife was like, ask her what happened to Vincent, but didn't Vincent? He was at, in it at the end, right? Oh no! All right, I said I wasn't going to go your on. Your wife, your wife particularly wants to know about Vincent. I mean, of the all dog? the questions yeah. she could ask me, what happened to the she dog? She wants dogs. to know what happened to Vincent. She likes dogs. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so okay, okay, back back to the Squicka Wonkas. Um, <laughs> so when you when you write a children's book, 
do you consult with child psychologists or you just kind of <laughs> go for it? I mean, do you feel because we write we some of our videos on our channel involve puppets and, and stuff that kind of looks like hey a kid might want to watch that. And then next thing you know, the puppet will be like doing drugs. And we're like, is this and not that any <laughs> of the Squaker Wonkers do drugs. One of them do does vices. smoke. And I got a lot of flack for that. So do you worry about that stuff for I, you know, I, if I worried about it, this would not exist. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, I've, I, everybody told, everybody told me no. Nobody would publish this book. People were like, we won't go near that with a 10 foot pole. I had a really big publisher outright tell me, not like, in my opinion, or, you know, for this particular publishing company, it was outright, you will not be successful. That book won't sell. And I just thought, I think I'm onto something. <laughs> this is this has got to be good if people have such an extreme reaction to it. Um, so no, I didn't consult any child psychologists. Um, <laughs> that was his question, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm just curious. But I no, did I'm explore a lot of the psychology of childhood, and I call it a playground drama because I think we forget that the scariest people on earth our children. Lord of the Flies might be the scariest story in the world because yeah. kids are crazy. They don't have any sense of right and wrong. They don't have any sense of boundaries. And they just like attack each other on the playground for absolutely no reason. But adults are never talking to kids about all that craziness and darkness that they deal with day in and day out with each other in their social circles. And they're lost. They're left to sort of navigate those waters on their own. And so I did think a ton about child psychology when I was writing the book. And do you, like, when you go into this place where you're writing these books, I know you have uh, a child and, you know, you're in a lot of projects and so forth, you're writing this. Where do you go, like, physically and emotionally to, like, you know, work on these? Um, because I am a mom. Um, it's I don't go where I would I probably otherwise go. <laughs> I mean, I think otherwise I would like go on a trip or I would go to some beautiful yeah. location day in and day out and, you know, be doing it there. Instead, um... I work from home. I have a home office. It's beautiful. I mean, it overlooks a jungle, and it's very inspiring, and it's lovely. Um, but my son regularly through the day comes, you know, pitter-pattering up the stairs and comes, Mommy, you want to play with me? And we talk, and we have a moment, and then he goes away again. And the nice thing is is that he has this really delusional concept that everybody has two parents at home all the time. Because we, I have, he has a stay-at-home dad, and he's very, very fortunate in that way. Um, so that's one of the ways that I kind of am juggling it all is that I work from home so that I'm also very present for my son, even though I'm working ridiculous oh, hours. You're writing a demented children's book in the other room. By the way, he loves it. He's three and a half, and he loves it. That's great. I, that really he's like, a fun book. When she gets in, when she gets, you know, when she turns into the puppet at the end, and then the curtain, the curtain closes in this sort of morbid way of like they end it with like the curtain closes, and you're like, what? That's it? She's gone? And there's like a rat dusting the stage, and my son, it's his favorite page. There's nothing on it but a rat dusting the page, but he's like, she got locked. <laughs> yeah, because he gets locked in his room all the time for throwing tantrums. <laughs> Are, is there a little piece of you in any of the characters, and maybe the main character? Everyone asks me that. Everyone always asks me. No, you wrote it when you were young. It's yeah. fair. It's a fair question. Everything I write now, by the way, everything I write now, I am the protagonist. I am fully self-involved in that way. <laughs> but this one I wrote before the self-involvement settled in. I was too young. And it, it isn't really me, but um, um, my favorite character is Greer the Greedy, because she's bonkers. I mean, she's just nuts. And I love nuts people. In fact, that was a note that I got from my publisher. Um, in the book, it actually says that she's crazy. And they were like, you can't say that. You can't say that. That's politically incorrect because it's, you don't talk about crazy right. people because there are actual crazy people out there. I was like, I know. I have so many in my family. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I want to talk about them. Yeah. If you were one of, the, if you were a squicker wonker, what would your name be? There's a lot of alliteration. Papa the Proud, Mama the Mean. If I was a squicker wonker, I would be um, Sally the self-involved. Mm. <laughs> Todd, what about you? Uh, a, a Todd the turtle? I don't know. Turtle? Slow. That's not a vice. I'm slow and lazy, and I like lettuce a yeah, lot. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. I think it'd be like Mark the motionless. We <laughs> yeah. both we both have a similar We're very problem. Kind of They're emphasizing their laziness. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. On that note, um, we do have a couple mics out here, guys, and if you want to ask a question. Feel free to approach one of those mics, and we'll uh, call on you when it's your turn. And the audio book, uh, I noticed, does it does it ever go full-on song? 
No, not full on song. There are moments where the squicker wonkers start humming out of tune because they can't sing very well. Okay. Um, but no, it, it, I mean, there is an audio book that will be exclusively for sale on um, audible.com. Well, not exclusively on audible because they put it on all different platforms like iTunes and, and uh, Amazon. And But there'll be an interactive book exclusively for sale on iTunes where there'll be little interactive elements for kids like, you know, you can change the sepia images in the book to color or... Um, There'll be little bits of animation. There's a little pop-up video by me and the illustrator at the end where I kind of help parents figure out how to talk to their kids about this crazy book because I think they'll be a bit at a loss at the end when their child says, what? And they go, I don't know. Let's not read it again. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's a video there to help sort of guide parents through that conversation. By the way, speaking of having to read it over and over and over again, that was one of <laughs> our goals, Johnny and I, when we set out to make this book. We were like, okay, how many parents dread reading time with their kids? <laughs> because they're like, I'm going to have to read uh, Where's Spot for the 700th time, and I'm over it. So we were like, we got to make a book that even parents would be like, let's, let's read the squicker again you know so it was like appealing to hopefully all you know all generations like all demographics parents teenagers my my 14 year old niece when I first read it to her not because it's really her demographic just because I love my niece and we were close I read it to her and she was like oh it's so good it's really good and then she got really embarrassed and upset for a moment out of nowhere and she goes wait a minute um auntie are, is this a book for little kids <laughs> And I was like, well, technically, but I think it's, you know, for everybody, like for anybody. For, I like it. I'm an adult and I like it. She was like, oh, phew, I was so embarrassed for a minute because I really like it and I really want it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, awesome. That's great. It's 14.95. It well, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's nice that you give kids credit, uh, you know, to sort of, you know, grasp some of these concepts of like, you know, the main character, she's not all bad and the squicker wonkers aren't all bad, but they're not all good and. Uh, I mean, I know my mom let me read Stephen King when I was a kid just because she was happy that I was reading anything. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and I, that's I'm true. pretty disturbed because of it, but I do read. Hey, you've you got know. four million followers, man. Hey. <laughs> disturbed works for you. <laughs> so is there any plan? I see the uh, the audio is great and uh, the, the visuals are, are really awesome. Is there any plan to make an animated thing out of it? Um, do any of you know who Leica is? The Do you dog know the that went company into space? Leica? You know the <laughs> company Leica. Yeah, I made Cora. They made Coraline and Paranorman and the amazing Box Trolls. Have you guys seen Box Trolls yet? It's so good. So, so good. Um, I, I've had conversations with them about it, um, and I'm not ready to make a movie yet, and they're not really ready to make a dark movie right now because they've just made three in a row. Um, mm. But uh, You could get Peter Jackson to make a three-hour version of this <laughs> one, one or book. Or three three-hour versions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, no, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> hey, man, I'm with you. I was a huge <laughs> Hobbit fan, okay? And it was supposed to be two movies originally, and then when they turned it into three, I was like, oh, no, no. You, you shot didn't. those, like, in 1984. Like, exactly. it was a long time I know, ago, right? I know. People, people were like, oh, are you sad that it's over? I was like, well, I was six years ago when it ended. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it you're like, I didn't even want to be in it. <laughs> 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 okay, did, you so have to, uh, did you have to audition for that, or was he, I feel like he kind of, hand picks you know he has like yeah. visions of people and, he and told i'm not this is not a lie this is the truth he told me in 2004 he wanted me to play an elf yeah he was like if i had if i had been casting lord of the rings before you like became an actress i would have made you an elf like and if he I saw you on the street he'd be like honestly I'd you're an elf seriously <laughs> i was but at the moment it was the most crushing thing he could have ever said to me i mean i felt like i could have dropped to my knees and bawled my eyes out because i was like i would have to be an elf I am like I wanted to be an elf all my life and then you just gave it to me and then took it right away but then like 10 years later he was like hey you so he just added an elf, an elf. yeah he did he was like I'm just gonna put an elf in this movie <laughs> <laughs> I get and the elves are the best looking of the of, in that world right I mean, by far yeah, by yeah. far I don't know I don't know humans like Aragorn Come on. Yeah, you got to well. go Vigo. Well, he's the king. He's going to be the most handsome guy in the whole hot. world. Does anybody else have a question? Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> By the way. Come on, go to the microphone so we can get it on uh, film here. Don't be shy. Yeah. You with the humongous earphones. <laughs> Start over here. That was those are by the way, those are in case I was too obnoxious and he needed to like muffle his ears and <laughs> didn't have to listen. Actually those so I could make good use of my walking up here. Um, 
In terms of demented, <laughs> other demented children's books, uh, can you recommend some more? I'm thinking Belloc's Cautionary Tales and things like that as well. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I actually can say that when I was a little girl, I was quite um, literarily deprived because my parents were blue collar, small town Canadian people. They did not have university educations. They were not, they, I don't even remember ever being read to as a child. Not even so from the back of a Labatt's bottle or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Canada jokes. <laughs> Just watch the hockey game, eh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but thankfully my grandfather gave me some good dark books. So I don't have like a massive library of them in my mind, but I mean more recently since I started writing this book, I've become more aware of who's out there now they weren't so much when I was a kid um, or at least I wasn't aware of them but like Gris Grimley um, he's incredible and his art is amazing um, he has this weird way of making creepy art look cute it's great because it's like tricks kids into thinking it's a cute story and then they're always kind of horrific and scary um, uh, and then <laughs> and then there's like Neil Gaiman of course is like mm -hmm. the king of, of dark and I mean even as an adult his stories scare the crap out of me they're very, I mean, and he goes to the whole other extreme, and he's always said, you know, like, stories are meant for escapism, so don't limit where people escape to. You know, if they want to go somewhere dark, let them go somewhere dark. Awesome. How about a question over here? Uh, thank you for being here. I'm a huge, huge fan. Thank you. And I don't have any kids, but I still bought two books for my future kids. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Plan to have two, so. <laughs> I have a last question, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, it's funny. When they said, does anyone have any questions, you can go to the mic, and nobody went to the mic. I was going to be like, guys, you can ask me about loss. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> I, I stuck it to the end. You know, it really opened up me at, opened me up as a person, I think. And uh, I have a question about uh, Jack and Sawyer. So... <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. We were gonna, we were I gonna call you Preckles the whole time. I will tell you who's a better kisser if that's what you're asking. <laughs> Something more metaphysical than that. So. <laughs> more physical than that. Metaphysical. Me metaphysical. More metaphysical. Metaphysical. So, so su suppose you know you were not tied to your character in the story, but you were you as in real life. Who would you have a crush on in terms of the character? Do you know what metaphysical means? <laughs> <laughs> you work at Google, man. <laughs> What he means is, which chakra would respond to which of those men? Um, Jack or Sawyer? Easy question. Come on. It's not an easy question. <laughs> okay, let's let's see. I I I mean, I like rugged men. I like men who typically are kind of like manly men. No offense to all the metrosexual men in the audience. You're <laughs> awesome too. Um, and I've dated my fair share of metrosexuals, but um, they're both manly. It's just like the whole stupid good guy, bad guy argument. And of course, everybody knows that girls typically like the bad guy when they're young, and then they get their heart stomped on enough times, and they go, oh, maybe I'll settle for a good guy. And then they stick with the good guys, and they're like, oh, no, I just want a good guy. That's all it is. I just really wanted a good guy when really they just settled for them. And then when the bad guys come around, they're like, oh, I'm kind of tempted. No, I'll stay with my good guy. I'm kind of tempted. No, I'll stay with my good guy. And that's my way of skirting around the question and not answering it. <laughs> That, that's pretty metaphysical, though. Yeah. So but you were you, you and Sawyer. Then I take it that 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 is the answer, right? <laughs> yes, yes. That is the point of loss. Is you're going to interpret my answer yeah. however you want to interpret it. Yeah. Thank you so much. I guess you got a metaphysical, but it's a metaphysical answer for sure. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, how about over here? Hi. So I have a kid on the way, so I'm looking for children's books. So thanks. Awesome. Um, my question was: It was originally a poem that you wrote when you were young. And then obviously you made an important stylistical change by turning it into limericks, but it's still the original version that sticks in your mind. So are you happy with the fact that you transformed the style and why do you feel that this is a better way to tell the story? That's a really good question. Um, <coughs> thank you. I, I don't know actually, I, I ask myself that all the time. Like why did I go away from the original story? And because and sometimes I miss it. Like sometimes I like the simplicity and sweetness of it. Um, but there were some very, <laughs> worthwhile reasons why I did. One of them was my editor was like, you have to fix this, it's not very good. <laughs> um, it's got something in there, but it's just not that good yet. And then the other one was over the 20 years that I had it in my mind, it had um, sort of brewed into um, a series of stories. It brewed into more than it originally was where I started to think about, well, who are the other Squicker Wonker characters? And Oh, you know, when I say the squicker wonkers, there's only one person who originally was narrating it, which was Papa the Proud, and, and so who are the other ones? And his name wasn't Papa the Proud at that time. Um, and so then 
it was like, well, if I'm going to expand it out into a series, which is what I feel it wants to be, then I have to change the story so that it makes, you know, it sets up a world, it sets up the characters so that you could um, be introduced and, and ushered in and then the series would carry on and, and, you know, open up the world. The original was just a very standalone poem. It was, it was just silly and simple and, and this one has a lot, a lot more depth. Perfect. Thank you. And I think we're going to do two more questions and then we're going to get to the, so we have time for the book signing. You're a okay. great laugher. I saw you in the crowd, and I was like, I'm just going to focus on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a great laugher. Years of practice. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You're probably the healthiest person on the planet. <laughs> so I know you have this grand vision for 18 books that building on this one, but I was wondering if you would see yourself ever writing adult books or like young adult fiction uh, you know, he did say fuction. You didn't hear it wrong. He said fuction. <laughs> <laughs> We're going metaphysical again, guys. Maybe he's from New Zealand. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuction. Love fuction. Yep. <laughs> Me too. I love my fuction. <laughs> um, I. <laughs> 20, so 2015, I'm. Um, the plan is. Um, um, Titan are, are have partnering with me to publish a graphic novel series, which will be geared towards young adults and adults. And it's based on a screenplay that I wrote about six or seven years ago um, called The Fortress. And my plan is to also um, take t time during that year while we're building up the um, graphic novel series to write a novel series based on, on the story. Um, so I'm excited to dive into novel work because one of the things that is so hard about writing for children is you have to have so much self-restraint because the amount of words you're allowed to have in the book is so few that to get across everything you want to tell is very, very difficult in such a tiny amount of time. So I'm really excited to just sort of take off the chains and write my heart out and create novels. I'll see if I can do it. I actually have no idea if I can do it. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. That's a great question. How about the next one? Uh, hey, uh, my name is Becky. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's um, up? Hey, what's up, girl? Um, I don't have a question. I've been stalking you for years. So I know everything about awesome. you. Awesome. Security! Um, uh, but I had um, uh, a, an invitation, actually. Um, I and a lot of people at Google work at a program called Citizen Schools, which are really amazing. Um, and we work with a group of kids in Harlem. They're sixth graders. It's a struggling school. Really awesome kids. And we go there uh, every week. And um, uh, I was trying to look up your book tour and I couldn't really find the date so you might want to talk to your people about like getting that up what there. it's on but my website it's uh, on all my socials it's all well over my mobile perhaps <laughs> but oh. anyhow, my problem but um I'm not sure if you're definitely my problem New York City on December 8th but the kids are coming to Google for their final presentations they do this big thing called a wow where they like teach back and they get really excited so if you are in town I did want to invite you to the citizen schools wow at Google on December 8th thank you That's thank all. you thank you thank you thank you for the invitation i We'll be on a Hobbit press tour at that time. Yeah, that's I'm cool. sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Maybe next time, though. Yeah, thanks for coming here. Yeah, yeah, next book number two is coming out next year, right. and I will make sure that I will mention that to my peeps so that we can put it into the tour next year. Right I would love to do that. Right. That sounds right. amazing. Right. Thank you. Right on. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you, you were also a great audience member. I heard all your like comments and laughing. <laughs> love it. I want. I want to ask you one more thing before uh, before we go. You said this. two more questions. We maybe maybe no you're Greer the greedy. All right. <laughs> yeah. No, ask me, ask me, ask well, me. Well, I don't want this to end. Once when I, 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 my mom caught me lying when I was a kid, and she read Pinocchio to me. <laughs> uh, and what? When would you? When would you suggest reading this to a child? I would suggest <laughs> reading this to your child when they have a super duper big tantrum for absolutely okay. no, you know, no, uh, no good reason to have a big tantrum. It's it's a great teachable book in that way. Um, like, in the end, the kid gets totally punished for their tantrum, and there's no out. There's no, like, oh, but it was okay. That's a rule in my house. If my son is misbehaving, the and he goes go in, in the a pot. Yeah, <laughs> boom. No, the coins, coins. The coins. coins. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, coins. But, coins, like, coins. if he has to apologize <laughs> to somebody, and they go, it's okay. I go, no, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. You can say thank you for your apology, or I forgive you, or let's move on from this, but it's not okay. And I just think too many times kids are like told, but it's okay. And it's, no, you were misbehaving. Locked. <laughs> Lock him up. You <laughs> heard it here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. All right, I, th I think that's it. I think we're going to... Uh, how about yeah. a little round of applause for our special guest today? Yeah, thank yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for coming. And... Uh,
we'll let you get over to the thing and do some signing.